Hey guys, I always get curious about Irish food during March, even after St. Patrick's Day. So today I'm going to share with you how to make an Irish curry quesadilla with a boxy inspired tortilla. This recipe was inspired by research into a combination of Irish pub foods. So I did some research into Irish curry, curry quesadillas, and boxty picture, the mixture of potato, hash browns, and pancakes. Somewhere in the middle of that, that's boxty. Some of you may be surprised that such a thing as Irish curry exists, which isn't too surprising. A lot of people think that curry is something that is just associated with Indian food or maybe Southeast Asia, but it's actually not too surprising if you think about it. Uh, because India and Ireland and the UK were all under British rule at one point, they share a lot of common foods and spices and actually different people who are British have said that curry is the food of British nationalists and each country has their own version of curry. So what are the characteristics of Irish curry? I won't get too into the characteristics since you'll see them as we go through the dish, but some of the characteristics of Irish curry are that they include a fruit like apple or mango, they have a spicy tomato and stock base, and of course for the true traditional experience you're going to want to serve this half with rice and half with potato, which is called half and half style. I'll walk you through how to make our curry quesadilla in this video, which will cover how to make the curry and the box de tortilla. I'll make a separate video, which will go up in a few days, on how to make the Dunmurray style rice that you want for the side for this dish, but you can also make regular rice to get you by until then, or if you just want a simpler side for this dish. To get started on your quesadilla, there are a few steps you're going to want to take to prep before you begin cooking. First, prepare the spice blend for the sauce. In a small bowl or ramekin, add the curry powder, turmeric, cumin, ground coriander seed, and cinnamon, so you can add it at just the right moment later in the cooking process. Second, peel and dice your onion and a large apple. So, this is a large red apple. You can see it's about the size of my full hand. Uh, for comparison, here is a green apple, a medium one that I bought at the store. You can see this one is much bigger than this one. So make sure you go for this size and a red apple. You'll also want to peel and mince your ginger. Now, to begin cooking, add the oil to a large skillet over medium to high heat. Add the onions and saute for four minutes. Next, add the peeled and diced apple to the pan and saute for another two minutes. Toss in the minced garlic and ginger. Now, I know what you're thinking. Maybe, maybe I know what you're thinking. Ginger, right? I am right there with you. I am not a big fan of ginger. I was looking at these recipes, looking at recipe after recipe, like surely there is a recipe for Irish curry that does not involve ginger, but nope. Nuh uh nada. There is no such thing. Or at least not a good one that I've found so far. So take it from somebody who doesn't really like ginger or at least too much of it. You're gonna wanna keep ginger in your recipe. Just trust me, follow through. And if you don't like it at the end, you can always make it again without the ginger. So yeah, you've added in your garlic and ginger and now you need to add in your aromatic spices. You know, the ones that give it those great smells. Mix the spices and onions together as they cook for another minute. Now add your flour to thicken the sauce. Cook it over medium heat for two minutes, scraping the bottom of the pan as you combine the mixture completely. The flour can burn and stick to the bottom of the pan very easily, so be sure to keep stirring the whole time. Gradually add the stock while you constantly stir the mixture to prevent lumps from forming. Scrape the bottom of the pan as you mix everything together. Bring it to a boiling point, 
then reduce the heat to a simmer. Add a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. It's not a typical component of curry, but it'll add a little more depth of flavor, which will enhance the recipe. Next, add the tomato puree and two teaspoons of sugar. Season with salt and pepper and mix everything together. The best turmeric to black pepper ratio, however, one fourth teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper to one teaspoon of turmeric powder is a fair rule of thumb. For a ratio, this comes out to about one to four. So one fourth teaspoon of black pepper is recommended for this recipe. Note that although turmeric is well known for being a hangover cure ingredient for its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, as well as its stomach and liver benefits, it will not keep you from getting drunk. Add in just a little chopped cilantro or one teaspoon of lemon juice to lighten the sauce up so it won't sit heavy in your stomach once you eat it. Then let it simmer for a moment as you pound and slice four chicken breasts into thick, even strips, being sure to cut against the grain of the chicken or along the shortest side. Once you're done, add your chicken to the simmering curry, being sure to thoroughly coat the chicken and let the mixture cook for an additional 15 to 20 minutes. Now let's move on to our box de tortilla. For the box de tortilla portion of this recipe, we'll use equal parts mashed potato, raw grated potato, and flour, which works out to 250 grams or two medium potatoes peeled and grated and two peeled, boiled, and mashed, and two cups of flour, which works out to 250 grams each, plus one teaspoon baking soda in a large mixing bowl, and mix until evenly combined. You can also add six spring onions, chopped, or if you prefer to skip that step, I'll show you later how to use parsley to add some color to fancy your box tea up in a few steps. Once you've mixed all the dry ingredients, add one one fourth cup of buttermilk a little at a time until you get to a wet, dripping consistency. Season to taste with salt and ground black pepper. Then heat a nonstick pan to medium high heat and melt a little butter over the pan to keep your box tea from sticking. When the butter begins to foam, spoon the mixture into the frying pan. For the more common breakfast box tea, you could spoon in small spoonfuls and cook each for three to four minutes on each side until golden brown. But today we'll make a larger box tea using three large spoonfuls and adjust the temperature down to cook on medium heat for approximately eight minutes on each side. Remember with box tea, the key is always to err on the side of cooking on a lower heat then a higher heat boxy takes a little bit of extra time compared to a pancake to finish cooking all the way through to the middle since you're using raw potato to help as a binding agent to keep it together. So you're gonna want it to cook a little longer. So if you're not sure, turn the temperature down just a little. For added color, you can sprinkle parsley or great cheese onto the top of your boxy, flipping it to grill your cheese and get a little bit of browning. Once you've finished cooking both sides, remove the box tea from the pan and place it on a plate or drying rack with a paper towel in the oven. So excess moisture from the box tea can be absorbed as it cools, but the box tea can still keep warm until you make your quesadilla. You'll wanna repeat these steps until you've used all of your remaining mixture. Once you're finished cooking, assemble your quesadilla. Plate rice on the side for traditional favored Irish half and half presentation where you serve it with half rice and half potatoes and enjoy. There are lots of other ways to eat, serve, and adjust this recipe, including blending your curry sauce before adding your chicken and putting it over fries, serving your curry over rice with a side of potatoes, eating your curry over rice and potatoes in traditional pub half and half style, or simply as chicken curry over rice with veggies on the side, forget your traditional and forget the potato. You can be crazy and radical like that. Really, there's tons of ways that you can eat this. In the next few days, I'm going to share with y'all how to make the traditional Dunmurray style Irish rice. So you can look forward to that if you wanna try an Irish take on rice for the side for this recipe. And watch out for my video next week on how to make beautiful multicolored deviled eggs for your Easter get togethers with plenty of time to practice beforehand. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe so you'll see me in the next video. Bye. Ooh, that sugar sweet. You got what I need. Sipping on the potion. All that good emotion. Just
just my kind of heat. Keep it on repeat. Testify the passion. Love.